Hey, thanks for being here. Arrow.net is where the conversation starts, and then you can share them forward. That's what it's all about. Speaking of sharing things forward, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 531 is with Greg Patnode from the group Desert Dragon. You were talking about this album taking uh, taking some time in, in putting it together, and the name of the album is This Side of Heaven. What all went into the process of it? So um, as far as uh, how, we, how we put the whole thing together? Yeah, because, I mean, it, it just seems like music has 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 made so many different twists and turns these days. I mean, I remember the days when you everybody would just jump into a van and head down to the recording studio. Now you can do this wherever you want. Yeah, well, we we uh, we had this thing kind of started a little bit before COVID and everything, and uh, uh, we had some ideas and stuff like eh, that doesn't really have enough punch or whatever to it, or doesn't have the hooks that we're looking for so um i went in and did um a lot of rewriting and stuff and uh then the COVID hit and then there was plenty of time to do it because you couldn't really go anywhere or do much you know so uh so basically we just did it from um you know everyone has their base their own um studio in their own house so uh we did that and just transferred files and stuff until we um got to the point where you know we're gonna you know lay down drums and stuff yeah. and then we kind of all got together and and went down to the studio and and uh kind of knocked it out and stuff but um yeah it was kind of this one uh this one took a little longer than uh than normal um got some stuff writing some new stuff since it was uh, a bit putting this together was, a lot of it was scheduling just because Keith, our singer, you know, he's in a couple other um, bands as well. Mm-hmm. So um, it was just a matter of, of getting, you know, people have time to to do this, you know. So, um, but we finally made it happen, and I, I think it sounds pretty good. And uh, yeah. It's it's great rock. It really is great rock. And I'll tell you what. Now, someone may come back and say, no, it's not just rock. It, it's a taste of all genres. Because, I mean, I love the idea that you guys were playing with a violin and size, uh, on a track here. Yeah. Um, we had uh, Del uh, uh, Escalander, if I pronounce his last name right. But um, he did the violins um, for, like, the lead violin player for the plant page tour back in the day um when i saw actually saw him at the forum and um so that uh you know like he was the one playing like that passage for like like cashmere and uh it was really cool and uh have him at my place in the city here was <laughs> was was really cool and uh but yeah I, I like i like you know i like mixing it up a bit because um you know, some bands like, you know, one song kind of sounds like the other song and time to get yeah. to track three or four, um, you're, you're kind of done with it. So, um, you know, you know, back in the day, like, you know, Jimmy Page, you know, he would have, he would throw all like rock, he'd like, you know, tangents of, uh, of uh, country in there, um, some Middle Eastern music, you know, he was like all over the board and, and that really made it pretty, you know, creative for the listener um, to get the different tastes of different music. And um, so I thought, you know, that's what I want to do, you know, with with whatever I'm, you know, putting together is have have some stuff with a little bit different taste to it, you yeah, know. Yeah. The album we're talking about is This Side of Heaven from the group Desert Dragon. That Those guitars... They're like the fifth Beatle in the band. I mean, I mean, I'm tuning in and listening to these guitars. I'm being drawn into this song closer, 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 and then here comes the vocals. I mean, you're you're really in control of of of, of what your listener is doing. Yeah, it's like uh, you know nowadays um, people's interest level is is pretty short and stuff. So you got to keep people uh, keep people interested. So um, every little bit, you know needs needs tending to you know so you know intros the verses what have you you know it's just so it all uh uh keeps the uh listeners attention i'm glad you brought up song intros because i mean i even, i put in my notes i said that this band is not afraid of long song intros i mean and that and that to me gives me it gives me time to breathe to get into the emotion that's that's coming through those fingers and through those drums and things like that and then i'm then i'm brought into the story yeah well, that that's funny you say that because um, lock and load, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Um, that one I spent a little extra time on and, um, they, uh, they were fighting me about that intro cause it was kind of long, but, um, always liked that song. I forgot that it's on the, I think it's the second album for Boston and it has a really long, I think it's the journey. I'm not sure. Long um, time. It, it, I think it was long time. Yeah. 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 It has a super long intro and, and it kind of breaks the rules of, of that. And, but the way I do it, it kind of sets it up for the, for the rest of the song. But, um, just so you're not locked into a box on, on songwriting, um, gives, like I said, you know, give the listener something a little different. And, uh, but, uh, I like the long intro. (laughs) So, well, I, I like the song Lock and Load in the way that, man, it's almost be like being a part of a spy game of sorts. You, I mean, it's like there's, there's some drama right there as the song opens and everything. Yeah, I had um, uh, uh, a guy I had met at one of the clubs over here one time, and he was playing with this um, tribute band. It was a Pink Floyd tribute band. And and I talked to him later, and he was like, like killer saxophone. And so I started to talk to him, real cool guy and everything. And then I took his number, and, you know, we didn't contact each other for a long time. And I saw him a couple times at different places and stuff. But, and if I, you know what, this is needs a saxophone. Let me give this guy a call and see what's going on. So um, when I started talking to him, I didn't realize, like, you know, the kind of stuff he did. But he had one, I think it was down in Orange County. It was a, um, I think it was a David Gilmore concert. And he needed sax, and someone said his name. And so um, that guy that sax has actually played with, with David Gilmore, which I think is pretty awesome. Wow. What did you feel when, when uh, uh, Keith St. John was, was auditioning for the band, and all of a sudden it was like, I mean, was it like, oh, my God, instant love? Or was it something like, okay, we're, we're going to have to do some harder music to, to make sure that we get full range vocals from this guy? Um, yeah, so uh, – when I started doing it and like, okay, like I was saying, like the hooks and stuff, you know, just weren't there and stuff. Okay. We got to rewrite this stuff because, you know, this guy's got a great voice and we want to, <laughs> you know, we want to make him happy and make him inspired and everything. So, uh, you know, we did that and, uh, he put his vocals on it really, uh, was an excellent blend together of the two. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a, he's, uh, he's a great, it wasn't really much of, audition i mean um you know to find a really good singer out there is hard to find so they kind of have to pick you in in sort of way you right. know and we're not right. you know uh, a common probably you know a common household name for our, our band so um and he dug it, so uh, here we are, you know? Mm-hmm. I want to see the light show for Swamp Thing. When you guys put that baby on a live stage, I want to see what kind of a light show you're going to put with that song. Yeah, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, I know I think of what you're thinking of there, too. And I think we're, I've been thinking about doing that. You're talking about, like, the, 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 like the red lights. And, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's, it's going to have to be dark. The sirens and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a uh, um, swamp thing. That's one that... Um, we're gonna we're gonna be doing some stuff tr- trying to 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 get that out there more and stuff too. Um, that one's one of my favorites too. It just uh, it gives it just kind of a. Uh, I'm 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 a um, big Leonard Skinner fan, mm. so I just to have um, you know they have that song Swamp Music, mm-hmm. and so like just the whole swamp music, not only the song but that style of music. I think you know the, the the southern blues and stuff is is really cool, and uh, so that's another you know part of part of music I like to delve into a bit. Well, I, I I love the idea that that you're allowing these these bands that were here before us, you know, be be like inspirations because one of, one of the things that you and I have in common is Blue Oyster Cult. I got into radio because of Blue Oyster Cult because I love the way that they they sold them on the radio because they were coming to the Metra in Billings, Montana, and then and then to hear that you know you, that you also have felt that inspiration. Yeah, you know, um, it was a uh, it was kind of funny when we 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 played. Um, place here in the girl hills called the canyon club we played with them and uh he's uh another big huge influence for me and uh so um he knocked on the green door and he goes hey do you know which room is ours and i go hey you can have this one if you want <laughs> and he goes oh that's okay I'll, I'll find something and then we're out in the hallway talking and me and the other guitar player and we're talking with him and 
or um, PR guy comes in and and uh, goes like in the conversation and and he has he goes he goes and who might you be and he goes I'm Buck Dharma <laughs> <laughs> and I go wow you didn't do much homework on this one I mean that's that's you know for me he he is ballistical you know wow. Wow. I mean, he is, he's, uh, he's, he's a great person too. He's a really, really cool guy. Um, but yeah, Blister Cold is, uh, he actually, one of the songs we were playing, cause he obviously listened to some of the stuff, you know, who's, who's kind of the, the sport actor or whatever for him. And, and one of the intros to one of our songs, he was playing on stage and I go, wow. And I gave him a thumbs up. I thought <laughs> that was really cool. You know, <laughs> when you have a song like save my world, that, that right there to me is a great power ballad. The, the power ballads that used to just dominate radio. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, um, putting that one together, um, we won, uh, uh, the uh, I don't know what year it was, but we won a uh, Malibu Music Awards. I think it was best rock song of the year or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I hear it. But 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 um, yeah, it's and uh, it just uh, that was that's definitely one of the ones I, I worked a long time on that one, and uh, it really came out great. And uh, yeah, really happy, you know, really happy with that. Do you feel that in listening to the album and, and listening to the process of how you guys have moved through music history, that you guys are basically the pioneers of a new age of classic rock or just great, great rock? Well, I would like to think that the um, style and stuff that we're trying to put out there um, is more of a darker classic rock yeah. with some, I don't know, some... Uh, uh, s s southern, you know, blues type of things, and maybe s some psychedelic stuff, and s some other different, you know, flavors to to make something like you know a style more like original, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, and uh, hopefully it does. Yeah, because I mean, down here in the south, one of the things that's, that's really been happening over the past couple of years is the fact that they're mixing country music with, like, like you're saying, the, the the dark southern rock, and and it mixes so well together. It's like this has got to create a movement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was before that happened, I was already kind of thinking about it and uh, see what I could do with it, but um, it's. Uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna get bigger i think mm -hmm. it's uh it does it sounds great i mean some of the bands and stuff they're doing which um it just it's the music just feels you know right down at home it's just it's just it just sounds great so i think it's going to go farther that that style of music you know well that style of music is also very big at a live performance do you want it to still be in the in the arenas and small clubs and stuff like that or do you want it to be all over radio the way that it used to be because i mean it's it's like i don't, I don't I, the mystique that's what they always said about about led zeppelin was that the mystique of zeppelin is what made zeppelin zeppelin yeah you know they didn't back in the day i don't think you know they could have played a lot more places than they did mm-hmm and Jimmy Page could have done a lot more interviews than he did, but it was like, like you say, that mystique that that really um, uh, made people go, "Wow, this is a strange band." I, I kind of like it, you know. <laughs> Don't know much about them. It's hard to find any information really about them and everything. And uh, they definitely had the one of the coolest mystiques to the band that that of any band I know as a creative mind how how have you changed now now that you guys have done the this album the way that you did where everybody was doing it in their home studios because I mean there for a while the only people that were in control were the albums or the album companies themselves now you're you're part of the marketing you're part of the production of it all you're you're the songwriting I mean you you are the business of music yeah I mean I think a lot of artists are going that way um you know once you put it together and you know, you get the, the word out on the streets, what, what, you know, of the music and everything. I mean, um, a lot of that's, you know, you, you've already done. So why would you need anyone else? Right. Um, <laughs> and I mean, we did, uh, we were assigned to a label at one time, but they weren't really doing anything. So we, we bowed out of that. It was a European label. Yeah. Um, and, uh, 
but uh, we'll we'll see what it is. It's you know, kind of like all or nothing, you know. Yep, yep. So, where can people go to find out more about the brand new album, which is called "This Side of Heaven," featuring the songs "Lock and Load" as well as "Swamp Thing"? Where can they go to find out more info? And I'm sure you've got merchandise as well. Yeah, the, um, you can you can get the CDs, or um, we'll have clips up there of the uh, of of the songs and stuff. You can check it out, and there's also you know t-shirts what have you um online and uh the website is desert dragon official.com desert dragon official.com greg you got to come back to this show anytime in the future man i mean if def leppard can be on this show nine times that means that's wide open for you to do the same exact thing really i love those guys those guys are (laughs) those guys are great oh my god i like that band a lot too those those guys uh really rock i have a little cover band um and uh just to throw people a curve, you know, we we uh, we played that song, uh, Take What You Want, and mm-hmm. you know, not a lot of people heard that, but such a great song, you know, and those guys have been around forever. So, oh. Super cool band. Oh, my God. Joe, Joe Elliott with that accent, he goes, hey, Arrow, we, we're we hard workers. It's like a factory. Right. Just treat us like right. an employee. We're going to bust tail. It's like, oh, God, okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The um, uh, Not Phil Collin, but the other uh, guitar player, um, Vivian, Vivian Cam- Campbell. Yeah, Vivian Campbell. Yeah. yeah. So, I met him a couple of years back at a at a club around here, and uh, real cool guy. But um, man, what a band those guys! Uh, those guys are smoking. Well, you guys are too on this album, and I want you to be very proud of it because I can't wait to see more of you grow from from everything that you've now opened yourself up to. Well, thank you, Errol. That's 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 very cool. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Hopefully, we get we get a. Uh, we get some gigs uh, over in your neck of the woods, and um, I really like it over there on that side. They just the people are all you know they're very uh, wholesome, and they uh, if they like rock, they go crazy. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, Errol. Have a great day.